so many perpetrators still alive, and so many liberators still alive. So with all the evidence, complete and non-related. And in their lifetime, never mind, I'm talking about today, how much more so 30 years ago, they are denying that it happened. Now, are you then surprised that there's a reform movement or conservative movement or others who may deny the event of Sinai, which is something three and a half thousand years ago? As simply why? Because it doesn't make sense to them. It doesn't make sense to them. I, I, divine revelation, how does God speak? What does God's speech mean? Uh, people experiencing that, come on. They, they, it's it's uh, not one of these uh, yeah, religious, the uh, religious myths. So they might also have an agenda. Huh? The Holocaust deniers have an agenda. And I'm not interested. Yes, an agenda here, agenda there. We are talking about criteria. That's what I kept talking to you the whole evening. Okay. Criteria, standards. If you have a certain standard, they said, Thank if you if you accept if you accept no if you accept if you accept any event in history of the past that it is true and all you have to go on is the artifacts that you find and the artifacts that you find are not good enough if they do not come accompanied by a certain tradition but uh, a recorded tradition is not really a tradition and especially if you look at it that ancient history is notorious for self-glorification for never talking about your own defeat never talking about your own degradation you will not, find, any, you will not find anything in Babylonian history in Egyptian history that will talk negative about your own nation history as we know it is a new invention which goes back only 2,200 years approximately that's when history pretty much became a subject a, a, a you can call it a, a profession, an academic subject. It was the Greek historians and the Roman historians. Before that, it was personal self-glorification history. And here you have a history, for the first time, where a nation talks about itself, uh, warts and all, as a rebellious nation, as a stiff-necked nation, as a nation condemned by God, as a, as a nation that, that, was, that they did not listen, that they did not appreciate, that was uh, ungrateful, uh, that did everything wrong, and not just the nation, even the leaders themselves. Even Moshe himself is faulted. Avram is faulted. Others are faulted. That they have made errors. Find me in other ancient history any other record that even comes close to such things. So, uh, which in so itself, the not so one. Many. All the gods got angry, not, and they yeah, not they one. Like they, they all have like these crazy myth- mythological stories. Yeah. How the gods got angry at them and punished them, and you know, there's so much record. Okay, so okay. So consider, consider, yeah, consider yeah, the no, Jews are no, settled. Does anybody take the, whole, the, the Homer as, as a historian? No. Okay, then so the, the, the might talk Israel, about the Greek mythology. the Jews in Israel, okay? Now, they start traveling around, okay? And they, and they notice that all the other nations and people have the, this glorious history. And they decide they want to have a history tour. Maybe it was just one or two people, even. Whatever it is, they wrote the Bible, and it had a moral code that kind of reflected the moral code of the Jewish people that were there in Israel at that time. They wrote it down. They mixed in legend. They mixed in a little bit of history. Anything, of anything, anything that people. involves... A, a several people that is based on falsehood that falsehood will not survive without there being counter arguments without there being a and, counter and there without are, and there with, with, yeah, name me so, one in, name me one written counter arguments name me one no the even the dominant even, argument the dominant never argument never mind never I don't care don't for, forget about the written so in the Gemara in the times of the Gemara in the times of the Mishnah there were Tzedukim there were this that I can halt what, what, do you do you what has that got to do with it? What are you mixing up with oranges for? The guys that believed in the Bible were the... Do- All of them believed in the Bible. No, the dominant All of them. How do you know? Rubbish. How do you know that? that was the you, are the, you are the one You are the one who now started citing Gemara. You are the one who now started citing... The Gemara you, no, let me finish. Let me finish. The, you are the one who cited the Talmud which speaks about Tzedoikim, which speaks about Purushim, which speaks about Kusim, which speaks about the Sadducees, which speaks about the, 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 the Essenes, etc. Mm-hmm. All of them without exception believed in God. All of them without exception believed in the Bible. All of them without exception believed in the whole Torah. Without w- leaving out one iota thereof. What they argued about was the oral Torah. The Tzedoikim denied Torah Shabal Peh. That's all they denied. 
Don't tell me that they started questioning anything of the historical events. Not one of them questioned that. So that's sheer nonsense that you're talking. There is not one single counter-argument, not one single counter-tradition to any of the biblical events that we have in our Bible. Not one. Never produced, never was, never existed. Until what? Until today. Until today. Today to what come... What's the earliest biblical critic out there? Biblical... Right, right. All the biblical events can be true. Bi- what is biblical critic? You don't even know what biblical, biblical, biblical criticism is all about. Sure. Right. Obviously not, otherwise you couldn't have asked the question. Otherwise you couldn't have asked the question. Could the religion be hijacked in the middle? That, that was all good. No, you couldn't have asked the question if you know what Bible criticism is all about. Bible criticism is about that it was written by, by four biblical authors, not by that it, wasn't, it didn't come out. Based on what? Based on what? Based on what? Though? Yeah, based on what? Let's take Spinozism, for example. He based on what? No, don't answer my question. Based on what? That they, they look at the different parts of the Bible and they can tell... Uh, what's they called? can tell... They, through their, uh, you know, uh, so they say, look here, to me this looks a different style than this. Yeah, yeah. Here it uses Elohim, here it uses Hashem Hashem. So therefore there must be two different authors. Now, can you come as a Johnny come late and say because to you the style looks different, therefore it's written by two different people? What kind of nonsense is that? You can say, if you don't believe in the Bible, then you can say that. But if you do believe in the Bible, there's no way you can say that. So their argument has absolutely got the leg to stand on. So they treat the Bible like any other literary work. Right. If you look at the Bible as any literary work, you have already rejected the Bible a priori. You have already said the Bible is not the Bible. You have already said the Bible does not come from God. You have already said the Bible does not come from those days. So therefore, what are you going to literary criticism for? You have already rejected it before you even open it. So if you have rejected it, and now you're trying to second guess... How did this work come into being? I mean, there's a, there's a sheer lunacy. If you want to take that approach, fine. But if you, if you say that, if you, that I cannot believe the Bible because I see a contradiction there, you think they discovered anything in the Bible critics? Is there one question that the Bible critics have raised? <coughs> Even one single question? No. That has not been raised by Chazal? Is there one single question that has not been raised in the Gemara and the Midrashim? I don't know. I haven't studied not a single one. Mom is not a single one. So they discovered America. So they have now taken a a priori approach. Since this is here, Shem Havaya, here is Shem Hakim, must be two out of Now, if I say the Bible is from God or I have this tradition, then I may have questions, not contradictions in the Bible. We say every day the Dominic. Schneek, Suvim, Makishim, Zeze. Two verses which contradict one another. We say that every day the Dominic. So to us it's nothing new. And that's not something that we said at the Bible this game. This is something which was written 2,000 years ago. But it's not just Shem Hashem also. It's different grammatical styles of writing. That are different in Nach, that are different from, from the Father. Nach is different. Different by different people. But you just said it comes from God. How can we believe in that? Nach is from different people. It's not the same author. The Chumash is all Moshe. Each biblical book is written by a different author. Of the other books. So that so the, nobody compares the, 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 the writings of Nach to the writings of the Chumash. The Chumash. The Chumash. That's, that's, that's sheer lunacy. That's like saying I'm comparing that uh, I expect Shakespeare to be written exactly the same way as uh, Goethe is written. That's nonsense. This is one person, this is another person. This, written, but, this time is written another time. This is about these conditions. But Judaism believes that it's all divine. <coughs> what is that got to do with it? That if it's all divine, it should all be you. It should be you. No, 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 no. Why? What do you mean, why? It's if, if The way I speak to you now is not the way I speak to my children. The way I speak to my children is not the same way I speak to my professors. The way I speak to my professors is not the way I speak to my students. I speak in at least 20, 30 different languages with 30, 20, 30 different contexts. You're talking there about completely different generations, completely different conditions, completely different prophets. But each prophet has its own, uh, his own language. So Judaism is except for the fact that there's different grammatical styles and different authors. The Nach, the Nach is totally irrelevant to Judaism. Nach is totally irrelevant to Judaism. When Mashiach will come, Nach will disappear. The only safe of Nach will remain is Megillah Zester. Right, that's the question I have. I don't, I, all right. 
Because Nach is basically, Nach doesn't add one iota, nor does it subtract one iota. So just be used as a historical reference from Shia Council? Not even that, we won't use it at all to become totally redundant. Rabbi, that's a question I have, is it? Com- completely redundant. Nach is basically the historical events, which have obviously moral implications. We don't derive one single halacha from Nach. Nor can we derive any halacha from Nach. And novi reshoi lechadish. The very test of a prophet is whether it conforms 100% what he says with what is written in the Chumash. If it changes one iota from what is written in the Chumash, <coughs> adding or subtracting, you know he's a false prophet. So the ultimate test to recognize whether somebody is a genuine prophet or not is if it conforms 100% from A to Z with what is written in the Chumash. The Chumash is the beginning and the end of everything. The Nach is moral exhortations. Nach is prophecies, prophecies for the time, prophecies for the future, uh, and Musa, from which we learn, or insights, like the Ksuri. Ksuri is basically insights, what we call wisdom literature, etc. But not something which affects my, any part of my day-to-day life as a Jew. Not one part of my life is based on Nach. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Tradition? No? Tradition? Nothing. It may explicate things which uh, become clear. So sometimes you bring a certain array from a posseg in, in Yecheskel, or in especially, and so forth, and then the Gemara asks, until Yecheskel came, how would they know that? And then the Gemara would answer, this was a halacha of Moshe Misenai. There are so many things which you have traditions. Um, but Yecheskel came and he re- recorded it there. But not that he is the, the one who, who innovated it, or that it started with him. And so like this with so many other things. So nothing, absolutely not one iota of Jewish practice has its origin in Nach. Purim. Huh? Purim, the last book. Yeah. And it's Purim Uh No. Okay. Uh, it's not even called the Reise. It's, it's called Divre Kabolo. How do you say But uh, the Reise is only what is in the book. Yeah, 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 the question. Okay, I understand the biblical concept is totally true and that the terrorists are all accept that. But who says that the, that the religion can't be hijacked? Like, I understand from his, from Jewish history. I don't know what you mean by hijacked. I'll explain myself. I'll explain myself. Very Jewish. We, we, under, we understand that uh, from Jewish history that at one point, like, Aristotle was very divided, and there was like 30 different sects of Judaism. And <coughs> 30? I never heard of 30 different sects. I never heard of 30 different sects of Judaism. When Yehuda and, and Aristotle... Yehuda and Yisrael, two countries that are not different sects. Whatever it was, and there were people with... Like, the sects developed later. There you had, uh, you had idolatry. What? You had God worship or idolatry. Not different sects. No, within, within Judaism. That, within came, Judaism, later. Judaism, that Judaism, came later. That came later. That came during the time of the second Mesemiktosh. The different sects. Different sects. After, the, after, the, after the tribes were lost, of course. Huh? Yeah, after the, the time of the second Mesemiktosh, yeah. So, could it be that that one sect decided, the Rabbana decided, we, they, had, they had to structure Yiddishkeit like this in order to keep it alive? Why should we trust the Rabbana? Be- well, they dis- because because they, decided, they hijacked the religion. Right. And they if, decided that, that if, they, if that had been the way you say, then why would they discuss the other sects? Why would they even tell us what the other sects said? Why would they tell us the arguments they had with the other sects? The arguments about the interpretation of Torah? Then we just simply have expunged that and ignored that and you wouldn't even know there was such a thing as Tzedekim. You have a much better argument when you have the other side. No, 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 no. Because this way you have the argument how they justify and prove their position versus yeah. the other position. Exactly. Is that hijack? You have the evidence in front of you. They give you the precise of the reasoning. You, you have to get the other evidence. That's why... No, Christianity doesn't... You, 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 can, you can't have... I mean, okay. have you, you, you want to have your cake and eat it. No, First I, you say it's hijacked, and then you say, well, in order to prove the hij- that it was not hijacked, they brought the other arguments. So we hijacked it, and we proved that it's not hijacked, they're giving the argument that there are other sex, and that we are the ones who prevail. It's much more, convinced. Make sense. No, it's much more convincing when you give the other side of the argument, and they say... But then it's not hijacked anymore. You see it. Then it's not hijacked. I see both positions in front of me. And I see why he says A and why he says B. Yeah. And I say why he says that B is no good, the same as you have this in the Rabbonin themselves. When Beshama and Basil argue, Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Shmuel argue, 
Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir argue. Okay. It's not just that they argue. He says A and he says B. Yeah. Rabbi Yeshua goes to Rabbi, Rabbi, Yeshua, uh, uh, Rabbi Yeshua with Rabbi Deza. Uh, they, each one would say to you, where the heck do you come from? Where do you get it from? What do you base it on? And you will try to shoot him 